Well, good morning and welcome to the pre-show on Pivot Shift Ahead. I, I, there's something that's come up a lot inside of the Facebook group recently that I thought we should mastermind around this morning because clearly this is a, an issue that you're experiencing out there in the marketplace. And, and I think the thing we try to do on here is mastermind together about how we can get better, how we can you know stay more engaged in what's going on in the market, how we can grow our business and help our clients. Buyers have unrealistic expectations right now. How many of you have run into buyers, put it in the chat, that have unrealistic expectations? And uh, we've seen it all over the Pivot Shift Ahead Facebook group in the last few days. I've seen a bunch of people post, so I don't have a specific one to pull right now, but the bunch have said they want to write low ball offers, they want to go look at homes they can't afford, they don't understand the market. Now, I think it's our responsibility to help them understand the market. When they want to write lowball offers, it's because we didn't help them understand the market. When they want to go look at homes that, that they can't afford, it's because we didn't help them understand the market. It's ultimately our responsibility. So I want to talk about it. I want to talk a little bit about how you're setting the stage of the market, how you're helping your buyers truly understand what's going on in the marketplace right now, how you're helping them participate in a way that helps them get under contract and move forward with the opportunity of their dreams. Now, Louise Weiss, it's your music week, so I'll let you go first. What, give us just kind of a best practice for working with buyers in today's market. Absolutely. So I use the Florida Realtors infographics and I print out stats like um, days on market, time to close, median price, and sales price to list price ratio. And that gives them perspective and, and expectations. You do that when at a consultation? Mm -hmm. I do. I, and I go hyper, then I go, I go macro, then micro. So for Florida or for where I live in Palm Beach County, I show them the Florida, then I show them the county, and then I show them the, the infographics for the area they're looking at. So they can zoom in and know what time, like it helps them with the timeline, James, right? And time to go under contract and then time to close. Um, it helps them know that this is no longer a, um, a buyer's market because our sales price to list price ratio is under a hundred percent. It's closer to 95%. Interesting. Uh, okay. So you're getting that info from Florida realtors. Every MLS is going to have something similar. Every board's going to have something similar. Luis, thank you so much. Ronnie, what are you doing? You're also in Florida. What are you doing in Orlando? So the buyer consultation, if you're not doing that, shame on you. And what, what I find mostly is uh, Agents don't believe that they should be signing a buyer uh, brokerage agreement. And that's the downfall. I just had a couple from Canada. They came down. They had aspirations. They're investors, blah, blah, blah. I did the buyer consultation. And as Diana Kokoska taught me, the, uh, the natural progress to sign that buyer brokerage agreement is a great buyer presentation. When they signed it, I asked them to make up the difference in the chickens if I, because I was working for a set thing. The only thing she asked me was, could I see that? And I thought about it for a minute. I said, you know what? That's why we're in this problem with this uh, litigation stuff, because we don't disclose. So I turned around and I disclosed. And I said, here, this one's at three chickens. No problem. This one's at two and a half. Would you be willing to make up the difference? She said, absolutely. Where do I sign? Here's the thing. They turned around and they want to do a low ball offer, even though I showed them our market report saying list price to sales price ratio. I said, great, that's fine. We can do that. And to get the seller's attention, we're going to do a 10% earnest money deposit. Do you agree? And I'll write it to protect that money. They said, yeah, no problem. Guess what? We got the, the low ball offer. But you know what turned around? That helped us through inspections because when the inspection came back and it was pretty damn clean, he turned to me, the husband, and said, we're not going to ask for any repairs. We just saved 35000 Thank you so much, Rob. Yeah, they got a deal. They made you happy. You got paid. For those of you watching, chickens are commissions. We can say the word commission. It's not a bad word. You're allowed to say that. But but you're you're saying, hey, as a first as a buyer agent, you want to be upfront about what you expect to be paid. You want to make sure the buyer understands that there's a gap in what you'd like to be paid, what you believe you're worth. Uh, that they're to make it up. They they say yes to that when you explain it to them. And uh, and then you walk through what the market looks like today, how to best get your offer accepted. It's not always just price, it's price and terms. And that earnest money in that example may have shown, hey, these people are super serious. Let's go with them. Like it's all collective together. 
but you explain the market. Then you get to an inspection report and they're like, no, we're good. We've already saved the money. Ronnie, that's a great share. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, Shana Pierce, good morning. Good morning. So right now I have a few buyers who actually expect the most, but want to pay the least. So exactly like Ronnie just shared, I really, in my buyer consultation, am getting super specific with bringing them back down to that payment. So when we're in our buyer consultation, if they're approved, whatever that full range is, we're breaking the payment down for the entirety of the range. And I'm just really leaning, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just really leaning in on my loan officer a lot more than I was before to really keep my buyers living in that payment. Uh, Shana, uh, age, uh, buyers buy payments, not purchase prices. And we've talked about that so many times. I think Pat Moyer is the one who originally taught us that, right? That that when you go through, someone's looking at a, what can I spend a month? Because the only person who pays the actual purchase price is the one paying cash. Either you live in it for 10 years, and, and so you didn't pay the actual purchase price. You paid way less, and you probably got a check when you sold it or you lived in it for 30 years and you paid three times the purchase price once you made all your payments. So no one's actually paying the purchase price. So to break it down by monthly payment, help them see their opportunity, super smart. And Callahan, we don't get to hear from you very often. So you're up next in Ohio. Good morning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can hear you great. All right. Thank you for the opportunity. I think this is a hot topic um, for me because it's not just at the buyer consultation. It is, it is throughout. It it's just constant and and never ending reminders of what this market is doing that that buyer has to know and hear from us. I think they're they're influenced by you know whatever happened today or whoever they spoke to, and it's as if you have to rein them in often. And um, Shana, I think you're exactly right. I'm talking to my lender and my lender's talking to the buyers more often than ever before. Um, so I don't think it's just a one-time deal. At least I'm not experiencing that and had to share. I like it. That's a great share. And thank you so much. It's throughout the process because as, as you go on your journey with them, they still are hearing different things and that's impacting them. You get to remind them. Thank you. And uh, those of you joining us in the pre-show, we're talking about setting buyer expectations in today's market because I'm seeing it come up a lot inside the Pivot Shift Ahead Facebook group where people are asking for help on that. Mary Ellen, what you got in the ATL? Good morning, everyone. So I have asked a lot of questions. So I think it's really important to find their, their motivation as well. So you're asking them a lot of questions. You're educating them on everything, on the market. <laughs> You get what you do exactly what Luis did. You go um, the higher, the hyper local. We look, we look at the list to ask price on all the the price, the all the houses they are looking for in that area. We're looking at the neighborhood and we're just having conversations the whole entire time. So we're also saying, well, last week this house was listed at that and it went for this. It had this many offers. So as long as you're educating and asking a lot of questions. I think that you will be okay. Um, we know that people listen to the media too much. So one of the first things I say to people is don't listen to the media, listen to what I have to say. I'm a professional and I know the market and I know the local market. That's great. Thank you. Bolly, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. No, I just joined. I was dropping my kids um, in the bus and I hear about the payment and don't hate me for this, but I work in the car business for 10 years. And that's one thing that they teach us every single time. Don't worry about the overpriced, overall price of the car. Worry about the payment. If this payment is something that you can afford, something that you can handle and minimize that to the payment. Forget about everything else. If you're not buying cash, like you say, doesn't matter. The payment is what you're going to have every month, and that's what you want to deal with it. That's all. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how people think. So we've got to communicate with them in a way that people think. <laughs> Bully, it's practically impossible to actually find out the price of the car. And when, when I bought my last car, I just kept asking, well, how much is it? Well, how, what do you want your payment to be? I don't want a payment. I'm just going to pay oh, you. They... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pay you. So oh, how you... much is it? Right. And so figuring out the price sometimes can be hard. And yet in 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 real estate, we go and we talk about the house cost seven hundred fifty thousand. No, it didn't. It doesn't cost seven hundred fifty thousand. The only one who pays seven hundred fifty thousand is the one who writes a check for seven hundred fifty thousand. 
That's right. right. Somebody puts down 75,000 and then makes, I'm making up a payment, makes a payment $2,000 a month. And they live in that, that that's what they end up paying. They'll pay seven ten. If they live in it for 30 years, what do they pay? 2 million. Well, I, right. So it's understanding I, I, how that works. Bully. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, right, right. And I'll tell you one thing, talking about going a little bit off the subject, but um, you were mentioned the other day about the $7,000 that you put in your first house. And I was doing the numbers on my, in 2015, I invest 7000 I was broke as it could be. And I took it out of my 401k. And today I sold three houses, you know, my own personal houses. I make 40 and one, 50 and another one. And the, and the one that I have right now, I have about uh, at least four hundred thousand dollars in equity, which means I convert seven thousand dollars into four hundred thousand in eight years, nine years. Where else can you so, do that? That's a great share. I know, right? Hey, Kathleen Thank Garden you. in Michigan. Good morning. Good morning. I'm actually in Texas today. I'm moving up my uh, packing up my son's house, so I set my alarm to get up on early birds and to be with you all today. Um, so I do a lot of out of state coming to Michigan and a lot of coast guards and doctors, um, and the big three executives. So I'm pretty intentional up front, asking their needs, asking questions, pr uh, preparing them for what the market is right now, which right now we are multiple offers, bidding wars. Spring is sprung very early in Michigan. I'm, I'm floored. So I set the expectations right up front, what market we're coming into, um, how much money do you have in reserve for appraisal gap guarantee to set that precedent now? Are they willing to uh, buy a house that needs work? How much work do they want to put in it? Do they want everything updated? And uh, especially timeline um, and just setting that expectation right now so that I can win the offer for them. And I've got to say, James, cash for me is not king. I've been winning, beating out cash offers by the way I present my offers, what I do, and especially with the, the VAs, because I have to get them accepted because they have to be here by a certain date. Yeah, I, I, I think it's all of it's terms. It's all sorts of different things. And I also think that it's important to remember that we have to explain the state of the market to people. If you're in a spot right now where the market's hot and everything is selling, I think we've got to tell them that. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, in this market, you have to be willing to play to win. Are you willing to play to win? Now, the, the, there's one of two answers. Yes, we're willing to play to win. Or what does that mean? Either way, you need to explain to them. So if they say, yes, we're willing to play to win. You go, great. Well, can I explain to you what this means? Well, yeah. I, yeah, sure. Okay, perfect. Here's what it means. Right? It means that. And then you explain what's going on. Right now, the list price is the start line, not the finish line, if that's the case for where you are, Kathleen. That that if you see it listed for 300000 it's going to sell for three twenty five. dollars Are you prepared to pay more than list price? You know, And then whatever else. I don't know what else is going on in your market. But if you lay out the things that you tend to see in your market uh, and lay out and go, are, and, and, and lay out that you may pay more than list price, uh, sellers aren't going to do any repairs. So you're going to buy the house as is. I'm making stuff up, right? But right. you insert whatever it is for your market. And then you ask. So are you willing to do those things in today's market? Are you willing to play to win and know that that's my, that might be what it takes in this market to win? Right. And, and then you and just James get quiet. Also, and now, hold on, let me finish. Oh. You just get quiet. And then Kathleen, they say yes or no. And if they say no, you, then you go, okay, then this probably isn't the Not market really. for you. Like this just isn't the market for you and we're better off to wait. But at least you have set the expectation. Go ahead, finish your thought. I can't hear you though. You're on mute. I also I need to know their budget. And this just happened with the two of my Coast Guard people. Um, they set high expectations because they they get their allotted amount due to their ranking, but that might not be what they want to spend a month on a mortgage in their budget. So I had to readjust my searches according to their budget and expectations. Um, and that's really important right now. No doubt. Thank you so much. Dean Moss, good morning. Good morning. Sorry about the brief uh, pregnant pause there. Uh, just wanted to say two things you need to do with every single buyer. And that first of all, you got to get them into the office. We call it CETO. Come into the office. Never meet them at a coffee shop. If you can avoid it, of course, there's always exceptions. Get them into the office. Why? Because that's your home turf. That's the home field advantage. They get to see your people. I always introduce them to all the people in the office who's, who's standing there. And they go, well, I feel like family now. Always do that. The second thing I want to propose to you is make sure your buyer presentation is thorough 
and they need to know how we get compensated. They need to understand that this isn't just a public service. You're doing this for a living. This is what you've done for a living for so many years, whatever it is. And this is how we get compensated. And if it's a little short in terms of the co-op fee, well, we're going to work that out, but we're going to do our damnedest to make sure the buyer reduces your price enough so you'll get that uh, additional contribution if necessary. And then after every property you show them, this is so, so important, right? You walk in, you're standing there for 30 seconds, they're beginning to look around, you always ask this simple script, script, is this the one? Is this the one? And you'll get a direct answer right away. No, well then get the heck out of there. Don't linger. You got to go ahead and center on what they want to do. So ask a lot of questions at the right time and in the right place. So thanks for letting me share that, James. Thanks, Dean. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Hey, Janine Garcia, you saw the most expensive house represented the buyer and the most expensive house to be sold in, in Northern Virginia, like in decades. So you're clearly an expert on this. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, so we, um, we always do the consultations together. Uh, we can either do them at Zoom, uh, uh, Zoom and in person. And I say there are five things we're going to be talking about. First, we're going to talk about you. And I let them talk and, you know, just brag about themselves and all that. And then I said, now we're going to talk about the process and how does it work? You know, because we want to know everything, even what a contingency means and and even though we're not going to have them, but we still want to know what they are because, you know, this time may not be for you. And then I go, what's your timeline? And I actually have a calendar, like a draft. And and I kind of say, we start here and in 90 days, we're going to be here. And, you know, congratulations on your purchase. So um, and then I, I say, are you and this I got it from our uh, maps coach. Are you ready, willing, and able? And what does that mean? Ready meaning, do you have your loan? Is everything set? I'm not gonna, you can, you know, you can do all the, uh, you know, looking online. Don't send them to me because it's, it's just gonna be a waste of our time. You're gonna get very excited. I mean, I do a lot of online shopping, but I don't buy every single dress out there. So oh. you just have fun, you know, enjoy yourself. But then when we're ready, I am going to take, I'm going to be doing it uh, for you. And we're going to do it together, which is the online touring first. And then we're going to pick at least seven or 10. And then after that, I'm going to say, okay, you just pick five because I'm not going to show you any more. And, and then after that, I say, that, that's the ready. And then the willing are you willing to, you know, uh, bid on it? Are you willing to not use uh, do the con uh, contingencies? And I, I go everything, you know, that they need to willing and able. Do you have the cash in the bank to do a ten percent earnest money deposit? If it comes to that, five percent is the minimum. And I, you know, it's like, I don't walk into anybody's house in pajamas. I walk a people's house wet, very well dressed because I respect them. So if you're thinking about 1% or 2%, that's not how it works in this market. And then the, the last thing I say, and we may have to be looking at a five-year plan because five-year plan means that the house that you're going to be buying, which is going to be perfect and ready may not be the your forever home. So let's look at the five-year plan. And if this house doesn't work in five years, we sell it and that's it. Thank you. Look, thank you for letting me share. Bye. The call is over. We are done. She legit mic dropped. Did you see how she went through all that and said, thank you? Did you see that? That was a virtual mic drop, Janine. Thank you, she says at the end. Janine, this is how you sell $6 million condos in Virginia, right? It was it was the biggest sale in Virginia for condominiums, of course. Ever, yeah, right? Was, ever in history. Ev yes, ever. Yeah. And that's ever. like an OG state. That's like an original. It, and it was a and it was a cash offer. And I said exactly the same thing to my buyer. 
if you're buying a six million dollar home, which I I it was six point two, and I said when I did the negotiation with the listing agent, I said to him, my client loves the number five. Yours love number six. Why don't we meet in the middle and like let's make it work? So I, we end up doing five nine five fifty just. So my client would be happy and his client would be happy as well because it been on the market for a long time. And I when I went to to my my buyer, I said, uh, we need a 10% earnest money deposit, half a million dollars, right? A little bit over that. And they were like, it's a cash offer. What happens if we lose it? Well, then you can lose a hundred thousand when it's a house that it's, you know, and that a million. Or you can lose anywhere, right? So you're still going to lose. You have to risk something. You know, you can even lose the money in the in the uh, in the stock market. So right now, for me, if you, if I receive an offer for ten percent, that's commitment. I'm going to. I'm as a listing agent. I'm going to t work with these people for sure. My client likes five. Your client likes six. That is great. And uh, that was master class right there. Janine, thank you. We're proud of you. You're awesome. Tell Miguel that. Uh, he's right know. here and he's like, we have to talk. Why do you have to talk? I don't like talking. <laughs> Miguel, she just laid it out for us. It's perfect. <laughs> That's great. Janine, and, thank you so much. And he's the guy, the, uh, the, the brains behind it. I love that. I love it. I love it. Amico Pope, you're the, you're one of them that brought up this question. So I want to give you the last word on this on the pre-show this morning, because I know you had some buyers who were getting a little crazy. So first, any ahas and takeaways? And, and then what would you add to this conversation? Absolutely. Um, this was so helpful. Um, the post that I made last night, I got some really great, like practical, applicable scripts that I can use today um, with my with my buyers to help them understand um, just where things are. And I think the aha that I had was um, I've been, you know, in real estate for over 10 years. And so I know this stuff in my sleep. But what I realized is the clients that I'm working with now, they don't understand what the market was two or three years ago. They don't understand what the market is now. And I can't leave it to chance that they know what market we're in, that they understand what it is that, to be in a seller's market. And so um, that was my biggest takeaway is to realize that even though I do this all the time, I know this, I'm supposed to know this, but I'm also responsible for helping them to have a better understanding of it. And they're, they're reasonable people. They just didn't have the information because I wasn't sharing it with them. So that is something that I'll definitely be incorporating into my buyer's presentation. And one thing that Chris Grano wrote on uh, in the comments, he said, see, it's a tale of two markets, the A market, hot homes selling quick and above list, and the B market, homes that are priced or presented incorrectly and are selling slowly. You just have to decide which market you want to participate in. We can even participate in both at the same time, but we cannot write B market offers on A market homes. Makes mm. sense? Great. Boom. That's great. And a reminder, those markets exist in every market. So if it's a if it's a elite seller's market, there's homes that are priced perfectly in great condition. They're going to go for top dollar and get multiple offers. And there's homes, even in a hot seller's market, there's homes that are overpriced or not marketed properly that aren't going to get top dollar. When we transition to a buyer's market, guess what happens in a buyer's market? The best homes still sell quickly with multiple offers. It happens in every market. We've got to prepare our people. It's a great share. Uh, thank you for being one of the several that posted that question over the last few days. And thank you to everybody who shared Ah, that's so good. Tale of Two Markets, those of you asking, is in shift. It's in a shift in the seller pricing chapter, Donna Gilbert. That's where it is. Thank you, everybody who shared. Uh, okay, glad we recorded this pre-show today. So uh, if you um, are watching the recording, we have conversations like this every single weekday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Go to jamesdshaw.com, jamesdshaw.com, and click join our free daily call. 
We record it about once a week. The rest of them, though, got to be live and in person. And I don't tell you when we're recording it, so you just got to be there. Uh, if you're joined us halfway through, good news, it's recorded. I'll get it posted on the YouTube channel, James D. Shaw on YouTube. I'll get it posted on there, oh, before the end of the day. All right, let's get on the gram.